All right, gang, we're to take three. Here we go. All right, graph the inequality y is greater than or equal to negative x. Let me get my million dollar pencil for this. So we have it. Yeah, there it is. And determine, oh, there it is. Ha! And determine which of the points are the solution. So, glasses on, let's go. Here we go. Sorry, I need to do. Oh, that made it kind of weird colors. Okay, I won't do that. I'll just zoom in for y'all. Y equals negative X. So it's going to go through here. It's going to go down one, over one, down one, over one. You could also graph that <clears throat> in your calculator. It's greater than, take the inequality, turn it clockwise. It would go up. The opening would, so if this were hot lava, when I turn it clockwise, the lava would spray up, so that means I'm going to shade up. All right, so which of the points are in the solution? C and D. All right, graph the inequality 2x minus 3y less than or equal to 9. Determine which of the points are in the solution. All right, so I think in order to do this one, I'm going to have to solve a little bit. I'm going to move the x, divide the y. So 2x minus 3y less than or equal to 9. Move the x. Negative 3y less than or equal to negative 2x plus 9. Divide by negative 3. The only rule I have to remember is if I divide or multiply by a negative number on inequality, it changes the sign. So I'm going to end up with y, flip the sign, greater than or equal to. Negative over a negative will give me a positive 2 thirds x. 9 divided by negative 3 will give me a negative 3. So when I graph that, I'm going to start at negative 3, and then I'm going to move up 2 and to the right 3. Up 2 and to the right 3. So I'm going to start at negative 3, 1, 2, 3. Up 2 to the right, 1, 2, 3. Up 2, 1, 2, 3. It is a solid line. Turn it clockwise so the opening, the lava would spray up. So that means I'm going to color up. All right, so which points are in there? A, uh, which the points are in the solution A, B, and C? All right, graph the solution to the system. So here we go. When we go to graph this one and we look at it, x is greater than negative 3, and you're like, wait, I can't, I can't put that in my calculator. No, you can't. So you have to remember that if you just have an x all by its lonesome, you have a vux situation which is a vertical line that goes through this point. So I'm going to come over here to negative 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to do a dashed line. Why is it dashed and not solid? <coughs> yeah, because there's no equal sign underneath there. All right. When I go to color, turn it clockwise, it would open up, and the hot lava would spray up. Well, which way is up? I can't tell. So you have to think of it another way. What are values of x that are bigger than negative 3? So if I'm right here, where's the bigger? Oh, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. It goes this way, right? So that means I'm shading this direction. It's a little different when you have those vertical lines. Okay, so now I'm going to do the other one. 2x minus 3y greater than or equal to 9. Move the x. Didn't I just, I did, look at that. That's the same equation. Same thing. Oh, well, I'll still work it. Negative 3y <clears throat> greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 9. Divide by negative 3. y is greater than or equal to 2 thirds x minus 3. All right, let's graph that. Negative 3, 1, 2, 3. Up 2 over 3 up 2 over 3. It is a solid line. Oh, did you already notice what I noticed? I forgot to flip it. I don't think I have any white out here. So, when I divide by negative, I have to flip the sign so it's going to actually go like that. So I'm going to shade down. So it'll go this way. This is kind of a hard one to see where they overlap a little bit.
So it'll be all this, basically everything from this boundary right here and over. So anyway, not the best graph on there. I probably should have done it by twos or something to make it work better. But that was how our graph would look. Alrighty, here we go. A rock is dropped off a tall ledge. The height of the rock above the ground can be found using the function this, where x is the time in seconds the rock has been in the air. Period, period. Want to make sure you ended it. <laughs> How many seconds did it take the rock to reach the ground? Okay, so I'm giving you this equation, and I'm saying that I'm up here. I'm just going to kind of graph here a little bit. I'm up here on a ledge, and I drop a rock off, and it's going to fall like this until it hits the ground. Here's the ground. So the question is uh, where the X is the time in seconds the rock has been in there. How many seconds did it take for the rock to reach the ground? What's the X value right here? Well, let's just use our calculator. Let's just see if we can see it. Maybe it's a good question and we can actually see where it comes. All right, so negative 9.8 X plus 49. Okay. Well, let's graph it and see if we can see it. Hopefully it's something easy that we... Oh, hey, looky there, we can. We can see it right there. So, one, two, three, four, five. How long did it take? Five. That's where it crosses. Because if you think about it, you're wanting to know where does it hit the ground. It takes five seconds. Uh, what do we call that spot? Do you remember what we call that, where it hits the ground? It had a name. When you are on the x-axis, here's our y-axis. Remember I would say that heroes stand tall, but zeros lay down. In essence, you're finding the zeros. I did that without looking. That's kind of funny. You're trying to figure out what's the zero. When does it hit the ground? You'll see things like that when you kick a ball up in the air and it comes down. How long did it take the ball to hit the ground? You know, seconds, minutes, whatever it happens to be. You're finding the zeros. Okay, an airplane is 25,000 feet above the ground, begins descending uh, for a landing uh, strip. The table below represents the coordinates on his descent. What is the rate of change? Well, I know that rate of change is nothing more than the slope. All right, so let's find the slope. I'm going to pick these first two points right here. And I need to do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. All right, so that's going to be 24,000 minus 24,500 and 5 minus 1. All right, do that in your calculator. Alpha y equals 24, 1, 2, 3, minus 24, 5 over 5 minus 1. Oh. oh, I put too much in there. Okay, here's a handy trick you may not have known. If you go up here and hit enter, it copies it. I can go back up here and I can delete one of those zeros. Delete. There we go. There we go. Negative 125. So my slope is negative 125 miles, is it miles that we're doing? Yeah, or feet per minute. All right, so what would the y-intercept represent in this situation? It doesn't want to know what it is, just what would it represent? So let's talk about this. This is quadrant one, this is my x, and this is my y. My plane starts here, and then it's going down at a rate of 125, so it looks something like this. I don't need to know the exact numbers. I just need to know kind of what's going on. What would the y-intercept represent in this situation? Well, here's my airplane, and he's, you know, tootling down. He's coming in for a landing. This would represent how long it took him to land, right? He'd be at zero for the height, and he'd be on the ground, and maybe it took him 10 minutes to land. This would be his height. At what point in time? When he starts his descent. The height when he starts landing. We'll just say landing. It'll be easier to spell. Okay. So the y-intercept would represent his height when he started landing. 
All right, what is the solution to the systems of equations? Okay, solution to systems where the two points intersect. Don't tell me one solution, I know. No, tell me what it is. One, two, three. Backwards, three. Up, one. Three, one. There it is. Solution. Okay, so here we go. What is the zero of the linear function graph? Zeros. Heroes stand tall, but zeros lay down. So I want to know the zero on that. I don't even actually know if I can see it. One, two, three, four. I'm going to go, it's right there at four. So at x equals four. That's my zero. I know. Love the zero questions. Those are easy. <clears throat> solve the following system of equations. Okay. <coughs> we can solve this any way we want. So many of you like to graph. Um, I think I'm just going to start off by graphing it. It doesn't tell me which way to solve it, so... I'm going to graph. Those of you that are looking at this and you're like, oh, but Miss Dean, it's already got x alone. Okay, you can, if you want, substitute y minus 4 in for the x. So if you're doing it that way, you draw your line and you would do 4 parentheses. x is coming out of the game. y minus 4 is going to go in. Plus 3y equals negative 9. Solve that, get your y, and then your x. Rest of us, let's come over here. Let's take this. We've got x equals y minus 4. Let's solve this for y. So I'm going to kind of go backwards from what we normally do. I'm going to rewrite this, and I'm just going to put y minus 4 on the left equals, and I'm going to take that x and put it over there. I'm just going to swap sides because I like to have the y on the left. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. So that's going to give me y equals x plus 4. All right, so there is that. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take the other one, which is 4x plus 3y equals negative 9. I'm going to move the x. So 3y equals negative 4x minus 9. Divide everything by 3. So y equals negative 4 thirds x minus 3. All right, there's that one. All right, so here we go. I'm going to come back over here. And I'm going to say y equals. And I'm going to put x plus 4 on top. And, uh, oops, let's clear that. Alpha y equals, I'm going to do negative 4 over 3x minus 3. I'm going to hit graph and we'll see if I can see it. Oh, yeah, it looks, like, it looks like 1, 2, 3. It looks like negative 3, 1. Second table, let's look. Let's go up to negative 3. Oh, there it is, negative 3, 1. All right, so those of you that like to graph, negative 3, 1. Those of you that were using substitution, hopefully you got negative 3, 1 as well. Remember, those of you doing substitution, that right here I was going to put y minus 4. I would solve that for y, and I should get 1. All right, number 20, the graph of the parent function f of x equals x has been transformed to this new equation right here. Which one of these has it? All right, so it looks like they moved it up how much? Up three. So that's up one, not up any, not up any. Oh, this is a whole, a whole bunch. So I guess we're gonna actually have to, unfortunately, yeah, we're gonna have to go up three and we're gonna have to move. Okay, we're going to do all of this in one fell swoop. That's the way we can see it. So what this did, let's talk about what this did. It moved up 3. And then x is always lie. And this is in parentheses. So this is in that relationship in my little heart. It's in love with the x. So we know that our x is always lie. So it says x is negative 2, but it's really going to move to the right. Or I'm sorry, the yeah, the right 2. So here's what we need to do. Let's just go over here. Let's just kind of graph it. We need to take f of x equals x and go up 1, 2, 3. But then we need to move to the right 2, which would be right here. 
and then we're going to draw our line. Okay. This one, can you see that when you do that, you're going to be something like this. So I'm up above 0, 0. This one is down below it, so it's not going to be this one. We're going to mark that one off. This is up above by a whole bunch. This is up above just by a little, but look, this one's down below as well. So it's not these two right here. So I'm just looking at these. Which one looks closer to my graph? Yeah, definitely A. This is too high. All right, so you had to kind of, you know, on this one, you had to kind of do the transformation at the same time. So if I were to use this one as an example, f of x is here, so it goes up 1, 2, 3, over to the right 2. The slope is still 1, right? So I would go up 1, over 1, or back 1, back 1, back 1, back 1. And you can see when I go through there, it's this one right here. Yep, so you had to do the transformations all together. Okay, Linnell found a dollar forty-five in dimes, at X and quarters in her purse. She has a total of ten coins. The graph below represents the situation. How many dimes and quarters does Linnell have? I don't even have to solve it. I just have to know this is a system. Right there's where it crosses. Can you figure that out? You gotta pay attention here. Dimes are what? So this is dimes. The Y is, this is the quarters. So remember you're going to do dimes first and then quarters when you write it. How many dimes does she have? Seven. How many quarters? Three. So it's going to be D. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.